what is up everybody welcome back to ai on crypto coming at you today on an absolutely beautiful sunday afternoon in houston texas where life is good i hope life is good wherever you may be on this stream are you guys ready to talk some metaverse conversation some play to earn conversation some nft conversation let's get it going specifically though the purpose of this live stream is to discuss the metaverse and as an investor community member contributor participant how can we maximize the value our return on investment from our involvement in the metaverse how are we going to identify value when there are no, now so many different metaverse options out there we've got uh, the digital land aspect of metaverse we've got nft art collectible we've got play to earn gaming and the f it's, it's getting kind of difficult to some extent to see the forest for the trees as they say so today i'm going to let you guys kind of know how i find value in the metaverse and how i continue to profit and thrive in this environment now please leave a uh, chat leave a message let's get a conversation going so it's not just me talking i love hearing your ideas so let me know what you think about the metaverse what what projects you want me to talk about if there's ever a time where you wanted me to talk about a specific project now is a great opportunity chat disconnected Okay, I think we got the chat back going. So definitely leave a chat if you want me to talk about anything specific. And of course, give me that thumbs up, guys. That is how we get a lot of people on the stream when you guys leave a like button. Definitely appreciate it. I rely on you guys to do things like that, to subscribe, to, to uh, and to leave that thumbs up button to tell YouTube to spin it around or else, you know, we'll just be talking to about 10 of us. But it's all good either way. It's all about the education and learning as we do our parts to contribute to the metaverse. Now, if you are new, if you've never been here before, this is AI on Crypto. This is a channel where we do talk about cryptocurrency prices and trends, altcoin gems, and all the things on the blockchain that fill our bags to the max and we stay far away from Rec City. I make daily cryptocurrency content and we focus on NFTs, uh, play to earn gaming, and the metaverse. So if you're looking for that kind of content, definitely subscribe welcome tap that bell so you don't miss anything in the future and of course guys if you like anything then leave that thumbs up button greatly appreciated all right and of course not a financial advisor guys all this stuff's very risky crypto in general play to earn gaming metaverse there is no such thing as a guaranteed uh, ticket to million dollar status right you're not going to become a millionaire overnight with any of these projects in a guaranteed fashion so do your own research talk to a professional before making any major decision all right guys so what is the metaverse how do we identify value in the metaverse and what is the one year five year ten year uh outlook on this emerging new sector now there's a lot of different trains of thought but generally many of the largely respected financial institutions think that the metaverse is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market cap sector within a couple of years now if you go to coingecko.com guys you got to learn how to use your resources now one thing you can do is you can go to the categories tab right here and once you do that you can actually select um the type of cryptocurrency blockchain that you are interested in and right now you can see that number 26 is the metaverse genre of coins so when we select metaverse we can see that axie infinity still has the largest market cap uh per compared to any other metaverse project at 3.879 billion dollars right below that is the central land then you have the sandbox also right there 3.5 billion so all three of the top three metaverse blockchains are are very close to each other in terms of market cap and then engine coin is the number fourth largest by market cap coming in at 1.3 billion and then render token at 605 million and it goes down from there 
but this is a good way to kind of get a snapshot macro view of all of the various types of projects that we do have here in the metaverse space and interestingly enough guys we can see that over the last seven days all of the top let's just say 20 metaverse top 15 metaverse projects are in the green and have a kind of a similar trajectory now you could argue as to whether or not Axie Infinity should be a play to earn token or metaverse. I, I think it could definitely be metaverse. Decentraland coming in at number two. I think they're definitely not the largest. Uh, they definitely shouldn't be ahead of the sandbox in terms of buzz, but it is what it is. The market might be slightly overvaluing Decentraland. Now, you could also go to play to earn, guys. Um... So if we go to a different category. And you can see that right above that is play to earn gaming. Now there you see Gala Games is the fourth largest with a $1.7 billion market cap. I definitely think you could include Gala Games in the metaverse. You could actually even combine the play to earn gaming and the metaverse for all intents and purposes right now. So this is a good way of identifying potential metaverse projects that you might be interested in. But then it's how do we find value? What are we looking at for projects that we wanna get into and why does the metaverse have value in the first place? Well, this Friday after work, I went over to my buddy's house who was having a crawfish boil, something we do down in Texas during crawfish season it seems like every weekend there's somewhere you go and we have those delicious crawfish we have beer and we get to talking to each other now all my friends know that i'm into cryptocurrency they are interested in it but definitely they're not nearly as involved in it as i am they're still in that phase where they're just kind of wondering which coin to buy the whole concept of metaverse nfts web 3.0 they're really, they're just scratching the surface in terms of even wondering what this stuff might be. So I tried to begin explaining it to them, you know, as if I would explain it to myself or, you know, somebody that doesn't know anything. And then I, I understand that it can be very intimidating, you know, just even trying to figure out why this stuff is valuable. Now, I'll tell you why the metaverse is valuable, guys. It's a great analogy to why the metaverse is going to be val valuable is the billboard signs we see on the road when we are driving down the road we see billboards they are these big towers with a billboard on it and it's basically a large advertisement that the drivers see as they pass down the road well as you get out into the country far away from the city where there's less traffic if you're a business you might be able to get one of those billboards for say 200 300 a month right because it's out in the sticks it's not around a bunch of people every day, you know, but maybe I've got a landscaping business or maybe I do custom pools. I want to get some cheap billboard space out there. <clears throat> okay. Then when you get closer to the city and you're basically like downtown, there's still some billboards, but those are going to be your high dollar billboards. It might be a Mercedes Benz dealership. You see on that billboard that's right there in the heart of downtown because a lot of eyeballs pass by that billboard and not only eyeballs but eyeballs that live in the downtown area that have money to spend so mercedes-benz might might pay uh fifteen thousand dollars a month for that billboard space well that is a very similar analogy to why the metaverse is going to be popular right so if a let's just say the sandbox as an example the Sandbox is one of the most popular metaverses out there right now. Now, in a couple of years when the Sandbox really goes live and all of the projects have built out their experience, there might be tens of thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands or millions every day that, that are visiting the Sandbox, okay? So if there's millions of people visiting an area, that's called traffic. And what people love that type of traffic corporations people with products to sell want that type of visibility that is going to be the core monetary value of the metaverse in the short term and that is simply having so many people in one place for corporations to target from an advertisement standpoint so that is one of the reasons why the metaverse is so valuable 
It's also valuable from its ability to connect a certain type of people. For example, why might the other side metaverse property be so valuable, right? That is the uh, metaverse being built for the Board Ape Yacht Club. Why might that uh, be very desirable advertisement space for corporations? Well, if you own a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT, you own a piece of art digitally in your wallet that's worth a quarter of a million dollars. Not only that, but you were just given a 150,000 USD value token airdrop, okay? Not only that, but you probably have a lot of other NFTs in crypto. If you have a bored ape, you're very likely a wealthy individual with a lot of money to spend. So not, and it's not just the bored apes, but a lot of other top tier NFT collections are going to have roles to play in the metaverse. So that is going to be highly desirable for a corporation to get the eyeballs in the other side metaverse because not only is it going to have a lot of foot traffic but the people there are going to have money to spend these are wealthy individuals in the crypto space so this is one of the reasons why the metaverse is so compelling from companies now a different aspect of metaverse value will come from a decentralized standpoint like a player own standpoint and that is simply us investors are going to spend our money because we are going to have income opportunities through these parallel economies otherwise known as metaverse that's more on like the play to earn side like a gala games has their flagship game mirandus this is basically going to be a medieval themed metaverse that's going to be built around the concept of adventure game but also has an economy that supports the players of that game so if you're an adventurer you're coming for the fun of a mirandus uh gala games metaverse experience you're going to go out into the wild and, and try to complete quests find rare valuable objects and just have a whole lot of fun out there doing adventure well in order to su support the avatar it's going to need food so that when it runs out of energy or it needs a uh, to restore health it can eat food that has to be bought in the town well the cool thing about these gaming metaverses like mirandis is everything that the players need is going to be supp supplied by other businesses owned by players. In other words, the butcher shop, the tavern with all of the food and beer, the inn where you go to sleep and get your rest, the stable where you get your horse and you tend to your horse, um, the wood shop, which will provide woods to build your business up. Everything you can think of is going to be like a real economy. So not only will corporations value um, advertisement space in games like Mirandis, but also investors like ourselves can actually buy businesses in that type of a metaverse setting and actually earn great profit by supplying things that the game needs, by supplying adventurers the tools and accessories they might need to go out there and maximize their fun and uh, return on their time in the, the adventure mode of the game. So what do I look for when I'm trying to, you know, value an NFT project that I might, you know, spend my money on spend my time in that kind of thing well i'm going to be looking for a great team what is the team developing that metaverse do they have any experience do they have partnerships and will this metaverse have that foot traffic in the future that's going to give it value as an investor so just looking here what are we on um this is the play to earn gaming let's go back to the metaverse one so if i was going to value axie infinity what am i looking at well, let's take number one, let's analyze the team, Sky Mavis. Obviously, they have a great track record of success over the last three years, and they have so much revenue to actually build and to hire developers, not only from all of the transaction fees from the axes that have been sold over the last year or so, but they've also had a lot of various funding rounds from uh, venture capitalist companies and things like that. So. Axie Infinity has a very large user base and they have a lot of money to continue to build out their ecosystem. So right now, when I look at the AXS token, for example, here we are looking at the seven day chart. It's slightly up, but when we look at the 180 day chart, it's significantly down from its all time highs of around 150, but it also seems to have found support. Now, this is going to be a very similar chart 
to a lot of the other metaverse projects. Like when you look at Decentraland in the 180 day chart, very, very similar. We're, we're down, you know, slightly over 50% from all time highs. So from a price action standpoint, that's just kind of what we're seeing across the board. This is what's known as an accumulation phase. Now, we kind of like to be in bullish environments where everything is going up. It gives us a lot of confidence because we see all the green candles, we put our money in there, and we hope to continue riding that wave up. It's actually a very dangerous time to buy. Now, this is not financial advice, but I like to buy during these accumulation phases right here. Like right here before all of this bullish action, I would have liked to have gotten down in the 70 cent range, obviously, right? But it's not it's it's, it's much uh, easier said than done because there's a lot of fear right now. Because for the last 180 days or so, we've seen nothing but negative price action. So we get very nervous. But this is honestly the accumulation phase where you want to stack as many of these coins or NFTs or land deeds as you can before the next bullish run up. So what is going to cause that next bullish run up and which projects are going to take the most advantage of that? That's really what we need to determine if we're trying to have some good return on our investment. So when I look at the top three here, I'm probably most bullish on the sandbox. Why is that? You've got a lot of major companies buying land in the sandbox and then investing and paying third party firms to build that uh, experience out. You've got some of the biggest brands in the world buying stuff on the sandbox and it's just moving in a good direction. That makes me very bullish on the sandbox and I do believe the sandbox is a great value right now and is something that anybody would want to look at in terms of metaverse as a blue chip item. Now, as you go down, it gets a little bit more risky. I'd say it slightly more risky, but still pretty strong is alluvium. Why do I like alluvium, okay? Why would I want to hold the ILV token? What's, what's significant about that? Well, Alluvium is going to be a play to earn gaming metaverse. So it's one of the gaming style metaverses, all right? And the ILV token is the governance token for the Alluvium gaming ecosystem. So that for every one ILV token, it gives you a vote in any um, ecosystem voting that's done. So it gives you weight in terms of somebody that can actually go in there, cast votes, and make a difference in terms of the future of the game. But also, Alluvium is kind of like looks rare. I love looks rare because owning the token makes you an owner of the protocol. Owning ILV makes you owner of the Alluvium blockchain protocol because once the game gets going live, they're going to have what's called revenue share for the people that own ILV token and stake it. So in the game of Alluvium, people are going to be having all types of microtransactions in the game, buying things for their avatar to go out there in the adventure mode to capture the alluvials they need for competition. There's a lot of transactions involved with that because your avatar is going to need to buy items like revivals, shards, and other things to go out there and do the adventuring you need to capture the alluvials. Then there's going to be the actual buying and selling of the alluvials. All of the, these transactions that occur are going to have a royalty that goes back to the Alluvium blockchain. Well, this royalty is collected and then dispersed to all the stakers of ILV. So by owning the ILV token, I am going to be owning the future profits of this protocol. So the question is, will they have the traffic? Will they have the gamers to make that have true value? because everything I just said will only have value if those transactions are happening. And I can assure you guys, if Alluvium gets the amount of users they're hoping for, the revenue share going to ILV stakers is going to be absolutely tremendous. I just watched Q&A with Kieran Warwick, the CEO and founder of Alluvium, and it's so exciting what they're doing. They're going to have like a decentralized autonomous organization that manages Actually, no, it's all gonna be smart contract. They're taking the human element out of it. They're going to create a kind of fund where the revenue from the transaction goes. And once it, once it reaches a certain level, it's going to trigger a process to where it, it uses all that revenue to buy up the ILV token. 
This is going to drive up the pro the uh, token price of ILV when it does that. And then the ILV tokens that are bought are going to be dispersed to all the people staking the ILV token. So basically, guys, this is what I'm getting at. When Let's say you have a thousand ILV tokens. You're staking them, all right? All these transactions are happening. There's royalties being collected. This is going to a fund. At some point, once that fund gets to a certain size, it's going to automatically trigger smart contracts that are going to use that Ethereum to buy up a bunch of ILV, which will be upward pressure on the price. And then all the ILV that's bought is going to be dispersed evenly to the ILV stakers in proportion to the ILV they hold. Now, I know what I just said was a mouthful, guys, but this is a true decentralized gaming metaverse that gives the token holders true ownership of the actual profit. Also, when you own the ILV token, you will get to vote on the leaders of the Alluvium ecosystem, much like the Ape DAO. So if you've been paying attention to the NFT space, you'll know that things have been going absolutely insane lately for the Bored Ape Yacht Club community. They recently had the launch of the Ape token where everybody holding an Ape uh, was given 10,000 Ape coins. Uh, let's take a look at Ape coin right now. It is chilling at $10,000 or $10 a coin. So if you owned an Ape, you currently have $100,000 worth of Ape coin if you, if you haven't sold it yet. And if that wasn't big enough news, guys, they also announced their metaverse project called Other Side. Now, this looks incredible. And they also announced that Animoca Brands is going to be helping them build their metaverse. Who is Animoca Brands? The titan in metaverse space that is behind the Sandbox project. So a lot of knowledge and a lot of capabilities behind Animoca Brands. They are going to be working with the Board Ape Yacht Club to build the other side metaverse. Then it was announced that the Ape Coin is going to be the utility token of the other side metaverse. It's going to be what powers that metaverse. So all the things that are bought and sold, access, it's all going to run through the Ape Coin. Truly something incredible that's being bought. They are going to have a land sale in April. So you're, you're going to have the um, opportunity to get a piece of the Board Ape Yacht Club Other Side Metaverse, actually be a landowner for one Ethereum. That's about $3,000. And for me, guys, just like I said earlier, what's going to make these metaverses valuable? How many people are, are going to be there? And how much money do the people there have? So... I would certainly want advertisement space if I was a, let's just say a fashion brand. I want to be seen in the Board Ape Yacht Club other side metaverse because the people walking around there have NFTs that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. These are people that corporation want. Corporations want their attention. If I have Board Ape Yacht Clubs or if I have Cool Cats or if I have World of Women NFT, all of these NFTs I just talked about are $20,000 or more a piece. That means I've got discretionary money uh, to spend. At the very least, I'd have some money if I sold my NFT. I could buy a car with that money. I could buy high-end clothes. I could buy, you know, high-end groceries, whatever. It's going to be very valuable advertisement space because I believe that the other side metaverse, metaverse is going to have a, a lot of very wealthy people going around and interacting in it. So those are the kind of things you want to look for when evaluating what type of metaverse projects you want to get into. Now, thank you very much, guys, everybody who is watching. We got seven likes at the moment. If you just joined, please tap that like button. It means the world to me. Really helps the uh, stream get going. Also, leave a chat, my, my, my dudes. Leave me a chat. Uh, tell me a project you want me to look at real quick while we're on the stream. You know, what do you guys want me to talk about? This is supposed to be a metaverse conversation, and I don't see that a single chat has been made. So, let you know, let's start talking. Tap that thumbs up button, and, you know, let's go. We've probably got about 15 minutes left on the stream. Oh, wait a second. Here we go. My bad, guys. We do got some chat. On-chain gaming, Jake Brokowski in the house. What's up, bro? Good to have you in the chat. We got Mike, we got Irv, we got BG, Galafam in the house. Let's go. 
So speaking of Gala, we can check them out right now, guys. If you if you know anything about this channel, you know that Gala Games is one of our absolute favorite projects. Uh, really hanging tough above 20 cents. If you've been around Gala Games for the last year or so, you know, I, I started buying Gala Coin when it was back here at one cent, two cent, um, you know, well below three pennies. So there's a lot of people that got Gala Games up here, 70 cents, 60, 50 cents, and they're freaking out a little bit at 20 cent Gala. But for a lot of us who've been in the Gala ecosystem for a long time, um, you know, we're, we're still looking at 23 cent Gala like it's pretty good. Like for us, um, the fact that Gala's holding so strong above 20%, and you know the old saying, guys, when in doubt, zoom out. And when you actually zoom out to the lifetime graph of gala games you can actually see that we have a nice long-term pattern going on right now of getting some higher lows that doesn't mean we can't have something happen and dip off a cliff here but i actually like the gala games chart now if we go to gala games that is the website of gala games we can check out everything that they are working on all right so we can check out their games and look at all of the metaverse play to earn video games in the gala games pipeline we can actually go through these real quick mike i see you bro he wants me to talk about gods unchained so thank you for leaving the comment uh we'll definitely talk about gods unchained right after this quick look at the gala games pipeline so if you're new to gala games they have a number of different kind of games about to, to launch all probably within the next two years with some happening before the end of the year. The two games that are currently live are Townstar and Spider Tanks. Uh, Spider Tanks is one of those MOBA style games, a mobile online battle arena, and Townstar is kind of like your farm and town game similar to Farmville. Both of these games you can earn cryptocurrency on and are uh, built around NFT ownership. We also have the new game Superior, which is going to be a roguelike game where up, a team of up to three players at once can begin a round. And it's basically you get as far as you can without dying. And as your character gets through the game, you start powering up and that you approach godlike status. If you die, you got to start over from the beginning. The game looks really, really cool. There's a nice trailer. I suggest you go check it out. We also have the Walking Dead Empires. There's a lot of good stuff I've been hearing about the Walking Dead Empires. I've been hearing that people are blown away by the actual quality of the gameplay. This is another title from Gala Games where you can actually own land deeds and all kinds of stuff uh, coming to the um, Walking Dead's empires. Now, I really think this is going to revive the Walking Dead community because if everybody remembers when the Walking Dead was at its height, after the Walking Dead episode, everybody would stick around to watch the Talking Dead. And the Talking Dead was just, you know, a simple talk show where everybody discussed what happened. Basically, everybody um, got to discuss what they would do. We, we kind of like to analyze what, what character would we be like in the zombie apocalypse? Well, what the Walking Dead Empires is going to do is it's going to let everybody live out that idea of what type of person would they be in the zombie apocalypse. And I, I truly believe it, it could totally revive that franchise. And it's the biggest entertainment IP to date that is doing a play to earn game. Now we also got Legends Un Reborn. This is going to be a card game, guys. And you will own the cards as NFTs on the blockchain. You can actually also own the arenas where the games are played. That's the form of land ownership in this game. Hopefully you'll be able to customize your arenas, put advertisement on there, advertisement space. But what I love about this game, and it's a little bit, it, it might be a competitor of Gods Unchained, Mike, but that's all right. I love Gods Unchained. Gods Unchained is going to be just fine. But Legends Reborn will actually let you, um, when you play the card, it will summon an actual creature or, you know, whatever you used as a card it summons it to the board so it's like a, a it gives you a 3d model of what you just played so i think that's something that a lot of these card uh, digital card games the players have been wanting that but i guess for whatever reason it hasn't been done 
Legends Reborn has some very interesting mechanics that they've discussed from a card play standpoint. And also, you get to bring your cards to life as real 3D creatures, lands, what have you, during the game. Uh, of course, Mirandus is the medieval-themed MMORPG that hopefully will be out maybe Q1 of 2023, maybe even some beta gameplay at the end of 2022. That would be absolutely awesome. But there's all types of NFTs that you can get for Mirandus from exemplar avatars that you will use to play the game that will give you enhanced skills. For example, if you're a Forge Master, you might want a Dwarf exemplar to give you enhanced forging capabilities. If you have a ship, you might want a seafarer to give you the um, maximum seafaring capabilities possible. This is going to stretch the boundaries of player owned ownership in games. For the first time ever, everything from top to bottom of this game is going to be owned by the players. And when you really think about that, Gala Games is putting a lot of trust in these people because there's an outside possibility that everybody could buy all these businesses and then not show up to craft things when the game's actually live. And I think that could be a disaster when you think about it. If the game goes live, people need armor, people need, people need weapons, people need the inn. Uh, and and uh, what if the people just, the business owners didn't show up? Um, I don't think that'll happen because everybody's so excited and there's that financial incentive because there is money to be made. Um, But yeah, we've got Mirandus, we've got Legacy, which is like a town star, but on a more professional level where you're building corporations and businesses. Last Expedition, really, really exciting. Um, this is going to be the first first person shooter that's AAA quality on the blockchain. Echoes of Empire, a space ex exploration game. And then Fortified is gonna be your tower defense genre game. So that is 10 titles right here in development and there's a lot more guys that we don't even know about yet. So definitely Gala Games is a metaverse project that you want to keep your eyes on. All right, so Gods Unchained. Actually haven't looked at the Gods token in a, in a while. Now Gods Unchained is the flagship game of Immutable X, <clears throat> so far at least. Immutable X is an Ethereum layer two, layer two protocol that focuses on play to earn gaming and nfts only so there's not any DeFi or anything like that happening on imx which i think is a really smart thing because you look at another layer two like polygon they just don't seem to be taken off and i think that's because you know they don't have as strong of an identity as immutable x does so here's the gods token this is the native token of the gods unchained ecosystem uh currently trading at $1.12 a piece. If you look back at a year, so it was as high as $6.89 for a while, and it's just kind of declined in value like a lot of in-game tokens have, like a lot of play-to-earn tokens have. Now, I actually think that the Gods Unchained ecosystem is a blue-chip play-to-earn game from a blue-chip play-to-earn blockchain. I do feel that Immutable X is also a blue-chipper, so I think that of all of the play to earn tokens out there, the Gods Unchained one is actually one that I think has a lot of long term utility and value because they don't, it's actually hard to get. They don't give a lot out to the players. So Immutable X is currently trading at $2.21, up 7% lately. But if you look at the lifetime graph, it is down from $9, which was its all time high. But man, you talk about an accumulation opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Not financial advice, but I am loving the price point of Immutable X. I don't think it would be much at all for it to reach its all-time highs again and then start going to, to price exploration because uh, a, 500, a $500 million market cap seems low for everything that Immutable X is doing. So that's one that I would certainly put on your radar if it's not already. Now, if you go to the actual Gods Unchained website... Let's see, do they have any announcements that I am unaware of? Uh, what do you think, Mike? Uh, anything you know of that's new? I haven't seen any updates. We can check out their Discord. Let's 
see if there's any recent announcements. You know what I would like to see from Gods Unchained? I would actually like to see a Gods Unchained land sell. I think that could drive some nice attention to the ecosystem, but they need to put some thought into it and and really think about how can that how could the land add to the game right like not, don't have an arbitrary land sell as a money grab like actually come up with a way um that the land could add some value now i do love gods and chain let's let's see what what kind of announcements do they have looks like the most recent announcement was a couple of days ago Ready for battle, grab your weapons. You can win both packs and God's token in the weekend ranked the tournaments. Um, so yeah, so I don't see any big announcement, guys. But you know what? This is a really fun card game. The Genesis cards are continuing to get more and more expensive. If you look at some of the legendary cards from the Genesis set, as well as some of the epics like Demogorgon, you know, you're talking about um, cards that are multiple Ethereum if you want them. Um, here we got an announcement on March 9th. Looking for more utility for God's token. You can now spend God's or IMX USDC or ETH to purchase your Divine Order packs. So they just allowed for the God's token to be a currency you can use to actually buy token uh, card packs. That's pretty cool. Um, ultimately, guys, I haven't heard anything new from Gods Unchained, but I think it's a great game, and it's it's it has been for a long time one of the best play-to-earn games for free-to-play players because you can get a starter deck for free. You can begin winning games in the weekend tournament with that starter deck and earning core cards, earning God's token, and as well earning packs. So I, I've always said that Gods Unchained is one of the absolute best um ecosystems for free to play players all right bg let's see i i really think gala is flat at the moment because we haven't seen any new games actually launched since townstar you know you're kind of right I, I definitely see your point there it's one thing to actually have games announced it's another thing to have live games that are generating revenue and also fun for a lot of players but look at Gala Games compared to Sky Mavis. Now, Sky Mavis launched the Ronin blockchain to be what Gala Games is right now, basically like a version of Steam for blockchain gaming, and they want to become a gaming publisher. But they have just not been able to attract the gaming titles like Gala has. I still don't know of any game outside of Axie Infinity that is going to be launched on the Ronin chain. I don't know when these guys are going to announce the first game being built on Ronin. But I would certainly rather be in Gala Games' boat with 10 games announced in the pipeline than Sky Mavis, which still only has Axie Infinity. So I definitely feel you. It would be a lot better if there were more um games out but they are coming we at least know they're coming am i right over nine thousand holders in gods unchained very low market cap mobile gaming coming uh am i sponsored i am not sponsored my dude unless you want to sponsor me with a super chat then i'd be sponsored by you <laughs> and you know what guys i would definitely appreciate uh actually what i appreciate the most is thumbs up Tap that like button because that's how we, we get this chat popping. So if I ask anything of you guys, it's definitely going to be to hit that thumbs up button. Now, Alluvium. I talked about Alluvium earlier. I really think that Alluvium has something special going for it. I would advise any of you to join the Alluvium Discord and check out this you, you actually you don't even have to do that you can go to youtube and just look for this video which is the alluvium economy deep dive with kieran warwick all right where they really discuss the tokenomics of ilv i actually listened to that full discussion today when i was on a walk and um it got me really excited about the ilv token based on what i heard from kieran warwick in this video guys you truly do basically own a percentage 
of this game if you are owning holding and staking the ilv token alluvium is going to be an incredibly important game for planner and gaming because the way they're setting up is it's going to be easy to onboard mainstream gamers i believe that alluvium is better positioned to onboard mainstream gamers than any other game due to the way they're allowing you to register and sign up you can do so with your email address link a bank account and buy everything with cash i, I truly think they're going to make it that easy but also if you're a decentralized web3 captain like myself and i'm sure a lot of the people on this chat um you're just going to be able to go and log in with your metamask wallet with no kyc so you can do it either way you can uh, start your alluvium journey the traditional way that traditional gamers are used to which you go to the website you log on for the first time with your email address and um and you create an account or you can do it the web three way with, where you just um you know sign uh sign on with your metamask wallet and off to the races and the other thing about alluvium guys i know there's a lot of you that watch these videos that are looking for good opportunities to get in make some revenue and potentially carve out uh maybe even a full-time job for yourself on play to earn gaming but you just don't have the capital to buy let's just say uh a business in mirandas like a weapon shop or something like that which is currently going for around five thousand dollars well all the alluvials in this game have to be caught in the wild they are not going to do an alluvial sell for the alluvium game what's an alluvial Alluvial are like Pokemon. They're the creatures that you go out in this world, you capture, and then there's a PvP arena where you can battle each other with the Alluvials that have been captured. Now, once you capture an Alluvial, you can keep it, train it, begin to develop your team to go out there and battle. They want to make this a major global esport, by the way. But you could also go and capture these Alluvials and then sell them on the marketplace. Now, it is going to be free to play free to play players can go out right out of the gate and begin capturing um the i guess what you would call the base level alluvials now to capture the more rare hard to get alluvials that will probably be the most valuable you are going to need to buy some items from the in-game marketplace like higher quality shards nets jetpacks various things to get to hard to get to areas and capture hard to capture alluvials this will take a little bit of spin but you can start out if you're totally free to play if you don't have ten dollars to your name you can start out by just capturing those easier to get base level alluvials focus on that and then when you sell those base level alluvials rather than cashing out taking your money invest the proceeds from that sell to get those items you need to get those better alluvials all right guys and then you can continue upgrading your avatar and your ability to capture high-end alluvials and really you know potentially even make a fortune if you go out and capture a really really rare sought after alluvial out in the wild All right, guys, let's see. BG, I know you from Discord. I'm Dude Viper. Wondering if I have any plans to start a guild for Mandis. I'm already in on chain gaming support group. Seven sailboats, but maybe you're going to do something too. I'm definitely down to talk about a guild, guys. Um, leave comments in the comment section. You, I also have my email address listed. If you have any kind of, you know, ideas you, you want to shoot to me, um, I definitely... I'm kind of my strategy right now. I'm a, I'm a capitalist. I'm a, a you know I'm into rugged individualism. I like the idea of me managing everything myself because I'm kind of a control freak. So I'm definitely stacking those in-game assets. I'm stacking land. I'm stacking exemplars. But that doesn't mean I'm not willing to pull my resources together with the right group of people. So if you're like me, if you're beginning to stack up these metaverse re, um, assets. Who knows? Maybe there is maybe there's some value in pulling resources together in the future. 
I think we need a lot more of these ecosystems to go live. I think we need a lot more of these games to go live. Um, but once all of these really good AAA quality projects get going, I think that's when we're really going to have great opportunities to, to, to actually form and profit from things like guilds. All right, what else we got? James W. Don't overlook Gala Music. Good point. Good point. What's new in the world of Gala Music? You know what we can do? We can kind of run through my Discord. You can see all the projects I'm into. So Metamall. I've got investments in Metamall, guys. This is a very interesting Metaverse project being built on Solana. It's got a lot of great partnerships. And they are going to basically make a massive virtual mall where you can own, um, you can basically own retail spaces in the Meta Mall. You can lease them out to businesses or build your own experience for shopping, retail, gaming, or social. Uh, the entire Meta Mall experience is designed around the magical flying spaceship cruising around the cosmos. That's pretty cool. Uh, you'll see different views of the cosmos outside the spaceship. So I guess this is a recent announcement just made today. Uh, on the 11th, decentralization, the world is being broken up and given back to us. The retail property market is currently dominated by big corporations and only those with huge bank accounts can lease property in major centers. Moreover, most retail outlets have been ruined due to the pandemic, though they were declining even before this occurred. Metamall can blow the market wide open so people can get in on prime real estate early and cheaply, writes Sergey Giancianina, the co-founder of Metamall. Now, one of the things that drew me to Metamall, guys, is this team. It's a very strong team that actually is behind uh, Metamall, and they have a lot of experience. This Sergey guy, he, he's, he's got a lot of pedigree in the virtual reality world. If you actually look up this guy's bio, He's a major player in the realm of virtual reality and a very well-respected guy. So imagine Amazon. Now think about, obviously, Amazon has changed commerce. Millions of people use Amazon every day. It's made Christmas shopping easier for a lot of people. But that doesn't mean that Amazon is the absolute best option for the future. The thing that something like Metamall will have over Amazon, let's say you wanted to buy a bike, okay? A mat let's say you were a mountain biker. Or I actually, let's say you were one of those road bikers that, you, you know, the real thin tires and you go on long distances on roads. Those people are absolutely very, very serious about their road bikes. And I know that road bikes can be anywhere from $500 for a entry-level bike, all the way up to three, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 for the really high-end bikes. Now, if you were gonna buy a bike like that online, would you rather just do it from Amazon where you just read a description? Or might you actually like to visit a space that that specific bike retailer has set up? He might even have an employee there that is there to talk with you about the various bikes. With the virtual reality headset, you can actually be in that shop created by that bike uh, retailer and that personal assistant there that they've hired that's in the Meta Mall waiting for the uh, customers, you, to come in, she can actually, go, she or he can go through the bikes with you. And it can, it can actually have a very similar feeling to being in the bike shop in real life. You can look at the gears and, and it's, it's definitely going to be a very different experience than what we currently get on Amazon. That's why that's just one example of why people are going to be so excited about the Meta Mall. Just think about that same example I just gave you with the bikes. What if you you've been into biking and you're trying to get your son to, to begin biking with you? Um, or maybe your son is looking for something to do. He's out of shape. You're, you say, hey, I, I like biking. You guys can meet in the Meta Mall. In other words, your father, who's in Houston, Texas, can put that headset on. You, who just moved to Dallas, Texas, three hours away, you can throw your headset on. Now, you and your father are both in the Meta Mall in the retailer spot talking to that virtual assistant. You can't do something like that on um, Amazon. 
The Meta Mall will provide a retail experience where you can literally meet up with your friends and family. You can go check out products together before buying them. There's also going to be social and gaming elements. And I, I'm not gonna lie, guys, I've made a sizable investment in Meta Mall. It's a long shot. I, I would say it's a it's a very high risk, high reward play that I've entered, but I'm it's very long term for me. I've kind of just forgot about it. I'm just gonna check in on Meta Mall every now and again. But I, I definitely am excited about the potential with Meta Mall. Uh, put it on your radar, do your own research, but it's definitely an exciting metaverse being built out on Solana right now. Let's see. Luvium is a great investment, says Mike. Ah, don't worry, Weepaw83. No offense taken. Uh, a guild? What's a guild? Well, the concept of a guild is like a bunch of players will contribute their NFTs to make it a bigger ecosystem. Like, let's say you had 100 axes, I had 100 axes. We could pull our axes together. Now we have a pool of 200 axes, and we could run a scholarship business pulling our axes together. It would allow us to have more scholars, more team combinations, stuff like that. It would also allow us to share the workload of managing the various scholars. And that's a very simple and easy example of how a, an, a guild might work with an um, NFT collection of axes. In the game of Mirandus, maybe it's a guild where one person owns all the land, the other person owns all the businesses, and you work together in a synergistic way. Um, you know, there's all kinds of, but basically it's a bunch of NFT owners digital asset owners pulling their resources together for some type of advance ad advantage all right guys cruising down my discord we've got the feline fiends this is a very fun uh affordable nft project if you're looking for a profile type picture project to get into feline fiends is a couple of weeks old um i believe you can still get into this project for under 0.1 ethereum so nice little low cost um nft project to get into with a fun community doing a lot of stuff I i'm bullish on this one long term i definitely like the feline fiends now this is my favorite uh profile picture project right now the the dgen tunes this Discord is always just absolutely popping, guys. Uh, this project's about a month old. Uh, they're pretty expensive to get into. The floor price is right now about 0.6 Ethereum. So that's roughly $1,700, $1,800 for a floor tune. Um, the rares are going for multiple ETH, but the community is really, really lit. Dope AF, as the young folks say. And uh, we got... what. What's interesting about the DGen tunes is for whatever reason, they attracted a lot of Cardano NFT community members, and it's a great and unique mixture of Ethereum buyers and Cardano buyers. Also, um, you've got a lot of advanced NFT buyers that are in on this project. A lot of well-known Bored Ape Yacht Club investors, World of Women investors are, are stacking their wallets full of DGen tunes. So that's a really interesting project. That's a lot of fun, guys. Put the DJ tunes on your radar. Looks rare. I still believe in looks rare hardcore, guys. Um, now, oops. Go back to Coin Gecko so we can check out the looks rare price. So looks rare is a decentralized NFT marketplace. Currently trading at a dollar 50 per token. Okay. Um, this is down from its high. It, it launched. Let's see. When did it launch? January 10th. So it's been out for about three months, but it looks like it's definitely found some support. And honestly, I'm loving this 90-day chart. To be quite honest with you, 
I'm getting very bullish. Not financial advice, but I this looks like a great setup for me. The market cap of $371,000 to me is undervalued. If you look at the biggest NFT marketplace, uh, it has a valuation of about 13 billion. That's OpenSea. And LooksRare.com has, I think, like 15% the volume that OpenSea does. So 15% um, of 13 billion is a lot higher than 371 million. But I think LooksRare has great potential to, you know, really catch up to open sea and volume in the uh, future just because of all of the perks and benefits there are to buying and trading nfts on looks rare as opposed to open sea you get rewarded in the form of looks tokens when you buy and sell on open sea you can also stake your looks token and it's kind of like alluvium you get revenue distribution when you buy stake buy hold and stake the looks rare token you actually get a percentage of all of the ETH that is collected in the form of the transaction fee. So every single day, you're actually accumulating looks and Ethereum, which is just fantastic. Um, if the Looks Rare project makes it, I think the early investors are going to be set for life, uh, just kind of kicking back, chilling, and, and stacking looks tokens and Ethereum for the rest of their lives because NFTs are not going anywhere, guys. NFTs are only going to become a larger part of our lives. They're going to become more uh, widely adopted. And if Looks Rare can become the number one decentralized marketplace, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, are the people that are invested today going to be happy. There's always going to be centralized NFT marketplaces like Coinbase and, and OpenSea and others, FTX. The exchange is uh, coming out with a cool NFT marketplace as well. But... There's also a very good place for a decentralized ecosystem that is owned by the participants as well. So I love looks rare, guys. Dude. Alluvium, we've already talked about them. Star Atlas is another great gaming meta metaverse, but it's probably about two or three years away. Monster Buds is a great NFT collection I follow. Play Nation, this is my favorite Cardano NFT collection. Absolutely love it. Uh, they always have a lot of announcements. Um, they're, they're partnering up with the Space Buds to do a, uh, a collab. You can see that right there. So a lot of cool stuff happening with Clay Nation. They're building their metaverse as well. Crypto Beast, uh, this is a very high risk, very high reward play that I'm into. Uh, where when you own these uh, Genesis Beast, they also come with a land deed, and there's going to be a play-to-earn game soon. Um, and yeah, Gallum Music. We'll finish this video off by taking a quick look at Gallum Music. So, Gala Games is an incredibly ambitious project. Very, very ambitious. It's already... Um, one, it's like unbelievably ambitious just what they're trying to do with gaming. But they've decided they're going to go ahead and take on the music industry as well. And they are coming out with a decentralized music network that is that everybody, um, everybody wins when they participate. The listeners can earn gala music tokens. The artist can earn gala music tokens, and it can all be done with less middlemen and a more direct connection between the artist and the listener. Um, I think it's really going to be good for unknown artists that once this ecosystem really gets built out and they have ways for people to mint their songs um, themselves, I think there's absolutely tremendous value to be had. Now, you can become part of the Gala Music Network by owning a node. And think of the node like a jukebox. If you go to a bar and there's a jukebox there, it's going to have all these songs in it. If you want to play the jukebox at the bar, you go and you put a couple of dollars in, and then everybody at the bar hears the songs you played. Maybe you put in a dollar, you get to play three songs, right? This is kind of a similar way. It's like a digital jukebox. If you own one of these music nodes, and then you um, you buy a song, like let's say you buy a track from Snoop Dogg, there might be a hundred other people that own that track. 
So when anybody goes on there that wants to surf Gala Music and they want to play that song by Snoop Dogg, they're going to select play. And that song is going to play from either you or the other 100 jukebox owners that own that Snoop Dogg track. And you're going to begin earning tokens every time that song is played. So it allows you to have some game theory as a music node owner. You're going to buy, you're going to pick which songs make the most sense for you. And, and it's really an interesting concept that they're working on. Now, I think there's obviously a lot of wrinkles that they do have to iron out, but obviously very, very cool to go to go for it like this. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much, everybody who has been on the chat. Invest Geek, my channel's really getting good. Shout out from the Metaverse Nomads. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Very nice of you to say. Thank all of you guys who have joined me here on this Sunday. I definitely respect your time. I know my time is valuable. So it means a lot to me that you would share a little piece of your Sunday afternoon listening to what I have to say. Thank you for all the comments. I think we had a pretty cool discussion today. Everybody that hit that thumbs up button, thank you very much. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe, tap that bell. We'll catch you on the next one.